Whilst Adolf Hitler was in power over Germany as a dictator, there are a number of significant resistance movements that arose to defy the Führer and the Nazi party. Resistance did emerge before and during the Second World War in Germany, in the territory that the Germans seized control of. One of the most famous acts of resistance was the Stauffenberg Plot, which resulted in the failed bombing of Hitler's wolf's lair. He was injured in the blast, but the effort to assassinate the dictator was ultimately unsuccessful. Across Germany, there were groups who sought to damage the Nazi party in many different ways, and today we look at the remarkable story of Hans Scholl, a member of a group known as the White Rose, who sought to challenge the ideals and rules of the Nazi regime. So join us today as we look at the tragic execution of Hans Scholl, the White Rose, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. However, before we begin, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor NordVPN. Many of my viewers enjoy watching historical documentaries and films, and NordVPN can allow you to access movies, television series and documentaries all around the world, simply by changing how your location appears. This allows you to unlock Netflix libraries and catalogues from all around the world, from within the comfort of your own home. Also, many of my viewers enjoy researching different topics, and NordVPN can allow you to access educational materials that sometimes can be annoyingly restricted behind a limit on how many articles you can read per day. With NordVPN this would not be an issue, and you can access educational resources from all around the world, which I found useful when researching for my videos. It is extremely easy to use, and your data also remains safe encrypted behind the virtual private network of the VPN. This allows you to stay private online, and ensures your digital footprint is secure and safe. It is available in 59 different countries, and is incredibly fast, being the quickest VPN provider out there today. NordVPN is also available on every major platform such as Windows, Mac OS and even Android TVs. So don't hesitate today, go to nordvpn.com forward slash untoldpast, linked below in the description, or use my code theuntoldpast at checkout to get a 2 year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. Hans Scholl was born in September 1918, being the second eldest of six children. His father Robert was an influential local politician, who later became the local mayor, and he was raised as a Lutheran. His father was seen as a progressive politician, and was eventually voted out of office for being too progressive for some. Hans's father, when Hitler rose to power, was a very strong opponent of the future dictator, and despite this, Hans and his sisters joined the various youth groups offered by the Nazi party. Hans joined the Hitler Youth, and rose throughout the ranks of the group, and was even chosen as a flag bearer when his specific unit attended the 1936 Nuremberg Rally. It was said Hans had great joy, however when he returned he looked tired and disappointed. Gradually at some point, Hans Scholl began to listen to his father's objections, and he quickly became disillusioned with the Nazis and Hitler. He was very close with his sister Sophie, and his ideas influenced his sister, who herself was involved in a female youth group, and was known for reading literature that was banned. As time went on, the Scholl children became more hostile to the government, and Hans along with his friends founded their own youth group. The club they formed were close-knit, and they went on weekends away hiking, reading banned literature, listening to banned music, and dressed how they liked to. However, a policy brought in greatly affected Hans Scholl, at the age of 19, every German had to spend six months working on a construction project or a farm, and Hans was forced into the National Labour Service, working on building part of the Autobahn. After his labour service, Hans was conscripted into the German army, and was part of the cavalry unit, however was shortly arrested by the Gestapo, and his sisters were also arrested for their avoidance in youth group activities. Hans was accused of immoral behaviour, alluding to a homosexual relationship he may have had. However, this was later dismissed by the courts, who had criminalised homosexuality. During investigations, the Gestapo searched the Scholl house and confiscated lots of evidence of the illegal youth club. However, Hans was released after four weeks, as his commanding officer eventually confirmed he was a loyal soldier. Following this, Hans then went on to study medicine at the University of Munich, and he became in contact with the professors, who stretched his mind and ethical ideas. Hans became critical of the Nazis' fervour, and under the influence of these professors, would later go on to form an incredibly famous group, focused on resistance. Hans, who remained studying medicine, was sent in the summer of 1940 to work for the German army, who were invading France. 
Tasked with working in a field hospital with 400 soldiers inside it, he assisted in operations, however later saw action on the Eastern Front. It was here where Scholl's ideas greatly changed, and he opposed the Germans, the Wehrmacht and the Nazis, after witnessing and learning about the mass murders in Poland and the Soviet Union that were being carried out. Groups such as the Einsatzgruppen followed up the advancing German army, executing an estimated 2 million innocent civilians. In the spring of 1942, it was claimed that the White Rose Resistance Group was formed. The group became known for producing leaflets, which were heavily critical of the Nazis and their policies. These leaflets were aimed at getting people to question the policies of the German government, and Hans, along with his sister Sophie, were key to the group. Along with other members, they would place the leaflets in places where people could take them, for example leaving them in phone boxes or handing them out at universities. One leaflet published by the White Rose told the German population of the massacres of Polish Jews since the invasion of Poland began, and it asked people to question why they were discriminating heavily in society against Jews. It told of mass deportations and the crimes of the SS. Another leaflet claimed that the goal of the White Rose was to bring down the Nazi government, and suggested using passive resistance to defy. Another documented the huge number of German soldiers killed during Operation Barbarossa, and it was said that the White Rose will not leave you in peace. It was many of the experiences of Hans Scholl that shaped the group's literature. For example, he witnessed one transport of Jewish women and children starving before they were taken to a concentration camp. The first draft of the group's fifth leaflet was authored by Sophie and Hans Scholl, along with a few others, and this leaflet said, Germans, do you and your children want to suffer the same fate that befell the Jews? Prove your deeds that you think otherwise. A new war of liberation is to begin. With this, they were calling for Germans to rise up in resistance against the Nazis, and it was estimated that they distributed around 10,000 copies of this leaflet. This leaflet was taken more seriously by the Gestapo, and a full investigation into the pamphlets was launched, with Gestapo agents concerned with the distribution, which occurred in Stuttgart, Vienna, Frankfurt, Linz, Salzburg, and many other towns. This showed the Gestapo that the network of the White Rose was much larger than they believed. The group believed there was a link between student unrest and their leaflets, and they decided to print 1,300 leaflets and distribute them. It was Hans and Sophie Scholl who were tasked with handing these out, and on the 18th of February 1943, they arrived at Munich University armed with a suitcase full of leaflets. Before the lecture theatres opened, they decided to deposit the leaflets in the corridors, and after handing out a large amount, they then disposed of them by throwing them from the top of a staircase down onto the entrance hall. However, they were spotted. A janitor who was an ardent member of the Nazi party alerted the Gestapo and Hans along with his sister were arrested. Searches were then launched and they found a large amount of incriminating evidence and more members of the group were then arrested. Hans Scholl was charged with treason along with his sister and was not allowed to select a defence lawyer. It was a rather helpless situation and his father was trying to visit the prison but there was little they could do. Robert Scholl was refused entry to visit and their trial began on the following Monday morning. At the trial, Hans's parents tried to attend, before they were thrown out by the guards. They appeared in front of the People's Court, before Judge Roland Friesler, a prominent Nazi judge who took no pity on the shoals. Friesler stated that, the accused had by means of leaflets in a time of war, called for the sabotage of the war efforts and armaments, and for the overthrow of the Nazi way of life for our people, have propagated defeatist ideas and have most vulgarly defamed the Führer, thereby giving aid to the enemy of the Reich and weakening the armed security of the nation. On this account they are to be punished by death. Their honour and rights as citizens are forfeited for all time. So Hans was sentenced to death and his citizenship was revoked and as he was led out of the courtroom, Hans reached out to his brother Werner with tears in his eyes and said, Stay strong, no compromises. Robert and Magdalena Scholl managed to see their children before they were executed and Hans was led out first. He wore a prison uniform, walked upright and briskly, and he allowed nothing in the circumstances to becloud his spirit. He was thin, drawn, and he bent lovingly over the barrier and took his parents' hands before asking them to greet his friends. It was alleged that he didn't show any fear and was incredibly strong as he faced his death sentence. Inside Munich Stadelheim prison, on February the 22nd, 1943, 
Han Shoal was to die. He was due to die at 5pm that evening, and inside a covered chamber in the prison, the guillotine had been prepared for his execution. There were a number of people there, a prison warden along with a government official, a prison doctor, executioner Johann Reichart and his assistants, along with other prison officials. The execution chamber had been fully secured against anyone looking in, and no one was allowed into the chamber to witness the proceedings. The guillotine had been prepared and was covered by a black curtain. At 5.02pm, Hanshaw was brought into the execution chamber by two prison officials. The overseer of the execution then verified his identity and the proceedings were handed over to Johann Reichart. Reichart was an experienced executioner who took the lives of thousands throughout his career. The executioner's assistant then led Hans over to the guillotine and he was then placed under the blade of the guillotine. Reichart then released the blade which immediately struck Hans's head from his body and the prison doctor then confirmed that death had occurred. It was said that his last words were, long live freedom, and with ruthless efficiency, it had only taken seven seconds between Hans being handed over to the executioner before the blade fell. It was noted that the entire execution process took only 52 seconds from the time he left his prison cell. Hans Scholl today is remembered alongside his sister for his work in the resistance against one of the most evil regimes the world has ever seen. By producing leaflets, he was calling on the German population to rise up and restore their morals against the Nazis. However, in the books of the Nazis, he was committing treason doing so. It was an incredibly dangerous time for people who defied Adolf Hitler, and many more like the Scholls faced the guillotine for their actions. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.